shall give thanks to the Lord for being his good. And we pray together. Almighty God, to the Lord our hearts pray, for all desires known, and for all the universe's secrets known. Thanks to the thoughts of our hearts, by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you, and to love you and cry your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Come, let us return to the door and say, Give us our sins and make us holy to serve him in the world through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in our hearts and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, Reading from the book of Deuteronomy. The Lord your God is bringing you into a good land, a land with flowing streams, with springs and underground waters swelling up in valleys and hills, a land of wheat and barley, of vines and fig trees and pomegranates, a land of olive trees and honey, a land where you may eat bread without scarcity, where you will lack nothing, a land whose stones are iron and from whose hills you may mine copper. You shall eat your fill, and bless the Lord your God for the good land that he has given you. Take care that you do not forget the Lord your God by failing to keep his commandments, his ordinances, and his statutes, which I am commanding you today. When you have eaten your fill, and have built fine houses and live in them, and when your herds and flocks have multiplied, and your silver and gold is multiplied, and all that you have is multiplied, and do not exalt yourself, forgetting the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery, 
He led you through the great and terrible wilderness, an arid wasteland with poisonous snakes and scorpions. He made water flow for you from flint rock and fed you in the wilderness with manna that your ancestors did not know, to humble you and to test you, and in the end to do you good. Do not say to yourself, my power and the might of my own hand have gained me this far. But remember, the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you power to get well, so that he may confirm his covenant that he swore to your ancestors, as he is doing today. This is the word of the Lord. And speak to God. The reading from 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 6 to 15. The point is this, the one who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and the one who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. Each of you must give up as you have, each of you must give as you have made up your mind not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver, and God is able to provide you with every blessing in abundance. So that by always having enough of everything, you may share abundantly in every good work, as it is written. He scatters abroad, he gives to the poor, his righteousness endures forever. He who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will supply and multiply your seed for sowing and increase the harvest of your righteousness. You will be enriched in every way for your great generosity, which will produce thanksgiving to God through us for the rendering of this, this ministry, not only supplies the needs of the saints, but also overflows with many thanksgivings to God. Through the testing of this ministry, you glorify God by your obedience to the confession of the gospel of Christ and by the generosity of your sharing with them and with others. While they long for you and pray for you because of the surpassing grace of God that he has given you. Thanks be to God for his generous, for his indescribable gift. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. If 
then you are not able to do so small a thing as that. Why do you worry about the rest? Consider the lilies, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. Yet I tell you, even Solomon in all his glory was not clothed like one of these. And if God so clothes the grass of the field, which is alive today and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, how much more will he clothe you, you of little faith? And do not keep striving for what you are to eat and what you are to drink, and do not keep worrying. For it is the nations of the world that strive after all these things, and your Father knows that you need them. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Generous God, may you fill us with the abundance of your grace as we feast on your word. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. God for all that he provides us with from the natural world. It's also a time when we tend to look at the bigger picture of the world, the lack of harvest in some countries, our poor stewardship of the earth's resources that's leading us towards climate change, and of the natural rhythm and seasons of life that we're all a part of. Harvest is a time to recognise that man is not an island, but an integral part of the whole of humanity and our created world. Some of you may well know that I spent the best part of lockdown out in my newly created kitchen garden at Shelford House. My colleague Zara and I cleared the ground of nettles, found some flourishing currant bushes hiding underneath them, and set about planting new crops for the summer. This was done in the expectation in those earlier days that we would be growing food to take into the kitchen and prepare for our guests. Now I'm not sure what it is about the soil over at Shelford, but courgettes love it. And for the last couple of months, Sarah and I have been picking as many courgettes as we can each day, and either giving them away, or turning them into soup, cakes, chutney and jam as well as roasting, steaming, frying and barbecuing them to have with our homes. We've had more courgettes than we could possibly need. Not because we're good gardeners, but because somehow the conditions were right and the plants flourished. And that's where we recognise the difficulty of the physical harvest, where conditions are right in one area and there's an abundance while somewhere else in the world they'll be experiencing either too much or too little water, too much or too little sunshine, to the detriment of their crop and their livelihood and their well-being. In this part of the world we've had many years of good fortune, but with climate change we're beginning to see the difficulties that some of our brothers and sisters around the world face in things beyond our control seem to stack up against us. But remember, we are in the season of harvest, a time of thanksgiving, and a time to remember once more the overruling of God in our lives, a God who loves all people equally and does not favour or punish one nation over another. So often the causes of a poor harvest are man-made on a global level. Yet our God is a God of abundance, a God of provision, a God of redemption and a God of faithfulness, who lived and moved among us in the person of Jesus, teaching us to live outward-facing lives, reaching out beyond our own boundaries to those on the fringes of society. One day, Jesus told a story about a rich fool, a farmer who created such an insular life for himself that he ended up alone and with nothing. Here's how it goes. Ready, Dennis? This is the farmer who owned lots of land. This is the seed that belonged to the farmer who owned lots of land. This is the weed grown from the seed that belonged to the farmer that owned lots of land. This is the small farm that was to store the weed grown from the seed that belonged to the farmer who owned lots of land. This is the larger barn, built instead of the smaller barn that was destroyed. 
saw the wheat grown from the seed that belonged to the farmer who owned lots of land. And this is the massive barn put in place to take place of the larger barn, built instead of the small barn that was to store the wheat grown from the seed that belonged to the farmer who owned lots of land. This is the sound of an all-night party in the big house, not far from the massive barn, put up to take place of the larger barn, built instead of the small barn that was to store the wheat grown from the seed that belonged to the farmer who owned lots of land. But this is the sound of silence. After death interrupted the sound of the all-night party in the big house, not far from the massive barn, put up to take place of the larger barn, built instead of the small barn that was to store the wheat grown from the seed that belonged to the farmer who owned lots of land. This is the farmer who owned lots of land, who had forgotten that the most important thing in life is to trust the God of the harvest for all that we need. Interestingly, Jesus told this story to the disciples not very long after he had taught them to pray. Give us each day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we ourselves forgive those indebted to us and do not bring us to a time of trial. And when you think about it, this is a harvest prayer that helps us to think about God's provision for us. Give us this day our daily bread. Just as the Israelites had to learn to trust God when they were in exile, do we trust God for this day, for our health and well-being, and the things we need to bring us to the end of the day? Do we trust in the midst of this COVID-19 pandemic that God is here with us, that he has not forsaken us? Do we trust that his provision will be enough? Or do we want to build ourselves bigger barns and store up those things that we think we might need. And I promise I'm not going to talk about toilet paper, <laughs> although that does serve as a good example. Give us each day our daily bread. Last week, when I was distributing communion, I realised that I was going to run out of wafers and forgot that Alan was standing just behind me with an additional supply. I was down to just half a wafer when Dennis and Nicola came forward together. And so I broke the last half in two and they received just a quarter of a wafer each. But it was enough. They had received the same measure of Christ, of his grace and of his blessing on their lives as everyone else. Because as I said a couple of weeks ago, there are no half measures with God. He gives all of himself to us out of his goodness and mercy. And today, once more, we will remember that when we receive the sacrament of bread. Bread for this day. Bread for this day, forgiveness of all of the days of our past. As we give and receive forgiveness for those things that have wounded us and for the way that we have wounded others, we're able to put the past behind us and walk into each new day with our head held high with our hands outstretched, ready to give and to receive the blessings of the present day. And then of course, there's the future. COVID-19 is a massive cause of anxiety across the world at this time. We thought we had it under control, only for it to break out again once we started to resume some kind of normality in our lives. Jesus followed the parable of the ritual with words of reassurance to his disciples. Do not worry. And of course, worry is often something of the future, something that we fear might happen. It robs us of our peace. And so again, we're prompted to trust God for all that we need. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Set us free from anxiety with the promise that God will always be with us and going ahead of us as he leads us. There is much to cause us worry and anxiety at this time, and we don't belittle that. But let's not store up those anxieties in bigger and bigger barns, but instead commit them to God in prayer, trusting in his provision for all of our cares. Let us not store up those things that we think we need to survive this pandemic, but trusting God for our daily bread. 
let's not store up those things that we've done or said for which we've already sought and received forgiveness. But let us live in the freedom of the God of our harvest, who loves us, cares for us, and forgives us all that is past. The rich farmer stored up all that he did not need, and then had no one to party with. As we put our trust in God afresh each day, so we become rich in his sight. We give thanks for all that we have, as we strive to share it more freely with others, walking into the future with confidence. And in this way, we store up our treasures in heaven, where one day we will all join the heavenly banquet of the harvest.
Fowler, Catherine Lucci, James Astle, Miles Gray, John and Anne Shuttleworth, Margaret Wright, Molly Wright, Norman Nathan, Mary Lee, Gillian Wright, Carl Harley, John Harleys, Pauline Levins, Val Morris, Alan Holmes, June Stringer, Jane Walker, Sue Kensington, Jim Hansley, Christopher Davis, Will Spencer, and David Roberts. By cooperation, sympathy, and generosity, give us today our daily bread. Because we have broken your commandments, doing what we ought not to do and neglecting what we ought to do, forgive us our sins. If any have injured us by injustice, double dealing, or exploitation, we forgive those who sin against us. When prosperity lulls us to false security, or hard times prompt us to despair, when success makes us boastful, or failure makes us bitter, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For those who have passed from this life to the next, Brian Taylor, Peter Wilson, and Angela Scott, we entrust into your tender keeping. And those whose years mind falls in this month, we remember David Abbott, Edna Aldrin, Ruth Bennett, Jennifer Fowler, Thomas Barron, Grace Pulley, Ethel Robinson, Frederick Dyke, Lucy Harvey, and Tom Franks. May they rest in your peace and rise in glory. In the assurance of faith, in the confidence of hope, in the will to serve, help us to love Christ as Lord and our neighbour as ourselves. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Please stop. Peacemakers who sow in peace raise a harvest of righteousness. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let's give each other a wave to say, Peace be with you all. to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. Almighty God, good Father to us all, your face is turned towards your world. In love, you gave us Jesus, your Son, to rescue us from sin and death. Your word goes out to call us home to the city where angels sing your praise. We join with them in heaven's song. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes. 
comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Father of all, we give you thanks for every gift that comes from heaven. To the darkness, Jesus came as your light, with signs of faith and words of hope. He touched untouchables with love and washed the guilty clean. This is his story, this is our song, Hosanna in the highest. The crowds came out to see your son, yet at the end they turned on him. On the night he was betrayed, he came to table with his friends to celebrate the freedom of your people. This is his story, this is our song, Hosanna in the highest. Jesus blessed you, Father, for the food. He took bread, gave thanks, broke it and said, This is my body given for you all. Jesus then gave thanks for the wine. He took the cup, gave it and said, This is my blood shed for you all for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. This is our story. This, this is, is our song. Hosanna in the highest. Therefore, Father, with this bread and this cup, we celebrate the cross on which he died to set us free. Defying death, he rose again and is alive with you to plead for us and all the world. This is our story, this, this is, is our song, Hosanna in the highest. Send your Spirit on us now, that by these gifts we may feed on Christ with opened eyes and hearts on fire. May we and all who share this food offer ourselves to live for you and be welcomed at your feast in heaven where all creation worships you, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Blessing and honour and glory and power be yours for ever and ever. Amen. So let us continue to pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Most merciful Lord, your love compels us to come in. Our hands were unclean, our hearts were unprepared. We were not fit even to eat the crumbs from under your table. But you, Lord, are the God of our salvation, and share your bread with sins. So cleanse and feed us with the precious body and blood of your Son, that he may live in us and we in him, and that we, with the whole company of Christ, may sit and eat in your kingdom. Amen. Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, bearer of our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, redeemer of the world, grant us peace. God, our creator, as many grains are gathered into one bread, gather your church from the ends of the earth into the life of the world.
let us pray. Creator God, you give us seed to sow and bread for us to eat. Make us thankful for what we have received. Make us able to do those generous things which supply your people's needs, so all the world may give you thanks and glory. Amen. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. Christ who has nourished us with himself the living bread, make you one in praise and love, and raise you up on the last day. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit, be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Thank be to God.